you're standing there sucking in the deep breaths and you're trying to process a million and one stimuli pounding into your head about what's happening below the barbell. It's fifth rep, it's the sixth rep, seventh rep, and everything's on fire. There's no doubt about that you're in a, in a, in a world of hurt, but certain parts of the body are sending you more stimulus, more stimuli. And for me today, after hitting another set of 180 for eight, it seemed like even harder than last time. I don't know why, whatever, I, I powered through it, I got eight. But what I was feeling today, probably because I'm not 100% recovered from the last time, but what I was feeling today was interesting. My lower back was killing me. Not killing me, but it was like the most fatigued part of my body, lower back. And the second thing was my calves. Now, isn't that interesting? Why my calves? I think the first time around when I did 180 for eight, I was just full of adrenaline, let's get one more, let's get one more. I wasn't even like trying to process stuff. This time around, I'm like, okay, what's what's the problem right now? And it's a, it's really, really difficult to, to, you know, suck in the big breaths, full of lactic acid, everything's uncomfortable, and you need to stop and think to yourself, okay, where is the discomfort? And the reason why I was trying to do that is because simply I want to know what's lacking, what's weaker in relation to the rest of me. If my quads were absolutely pumped, then I'm like, okay, so they are the ones giving up first. If my lower back is pumped, then that's giving up first. And then from that information, I can move forward and go, okay, so maybe for the accessory lifts after I get through this freaking hell, I can give some more work to the stuff that was really on fire during the squats. And I think this is like one of the biggest benefits of doing high rep work is that it gives you kind of like, It's murky as hell. It's murky water, but it kind of gives you some indication of what really was troubling you. Because in my mind, I'm like this. Okay, so what if I can pause this video? Let's pause reality. And I can, uh, you know, select the calves, select the lower back. And instead of making them fully red, like they're they're red on my radar, red on my map, that really, really hurting. I can just turn them to green. And so they're not on fire. They're not troubling me. I could probably get a couple more reps and a couple more reps. And then maybe something else will become, start to go yellow and then orange and then red. Okay, where's the heat map? Oh, okay, now it's the glutes that are troubled. Okay, so that's what's happening. But like when you do a set, an MRAT set, set, when you're really, really pushing something, whatever, whatever the movement is, something, some part of that system of your body is going to fail ahead of something else. For instance, my forearms were not on fire. I'm squatting the bar. My forearms are not a prime mover. They're not really involved in much of what's going on. Yeah, they're contracting, blah, 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 but they're not, they're not going to fatigue. I'm not going to be doing squats and going like, oh my God, my forearms want to blow up. That's never happened. So it's the glutes. It's, it's, it's the lower back. That's what I was feeling. And it's the calves. Now, the lower back got a mighty old workout. I could have done some GHDs afterwards, but instead I, I sat there and I started processing and I started thinking, hmm. Should I jump in the car right now, drive to the gym and do the seated calf raise? Why the seated calf raise? Why not the standing calf raise? Well, I was feeling most of my discomfort in the middle of and the bottom of portion of the squat. Not when I was standing. You see, when you're standing, when your knee is extended, when, you, when, your, when your leg is fully straight, your gastrocnemius and your soleus are kind of like really, really in tune. Both of them are working. But as soon as you start to bend the knee, the gastrocnemius starts to have less and less of an impact on the ankle. It's just a slack in the system and you cannot act upon it. But the soleus becomes more and more the plantar flexor of the foot, of the ankle, as you start to bend the knee. So I was feeling pumped. So how's this? I was feeling pumped calves doing a squat. I wasn't doing a calf raise. Squatting. Which tells me the soleus is probably frying. Which tells me the bar was traveling a little bit too far forward on my feet. Wasn't in the middle of the foot. And more and more there was a requirement for me to punch these toes into the ground and prevent me from falling flat on my face on the squat. So I don't know. I'm just speaking out loud here. Let's just say I had much stronger calves. Maybe that bar travels over the middle of the foot more because the calves are not letting me fall forward. 
is just a fleeting thought that I had. I haven't really invested a lot of energy to think about that, but maybe it's something like that. Maybe if I didn't have the calf pump, the calf discomfort today, maybe I could have got another rep. Although I think the primary limiting factor here uh, is the lower back. And my God, did I work it out today. Uh, seventh and eighth rep, I literally felt like I was hanging on my lower back. Not a nice feeling. I, I lost the optimal positioning. I lost that perfect flat back. I've started to feel the middle of my back starting to round. And that was uh, what led to me, you know, uh, stopping the set at eight. I really wanted nine, but not going to happen today. And also, like, before the second started, uh, you know, before the workout, really, I was like, okay, what am I doing today? Am I getting five or do I go for another eight? Or do I go for nine? And I thought to myself, well, what are the chances that I hit a PR a couple of days ago, three days ago, I hit 180 for eight. And then three days later, I hit 180 for nine or 10. Like, what's the expectation here? Every three days, I'm going to put a rep on. That's like, I'm not a novice. It's not going to happen. So part of me was like, let's just stop at five. And then let's do another you know, week or two of fives and then try maybe a set of nine or 10 down the track. Because clearly, I'm still fatigued from the previous set. Central nervously, central nervously, definitely. Like, I'm not 100%. I can't be after a mighty set like that. And also my muscles, my lower back, you know, it was kind of like already pumped up a bit even when I got to the 140 for five today as a warm-up. Uh, but anyway, pushed through it. I wanted to know. I wanted to feel. And, and I did, which is all well and good. Uh, but it was interesting that the calves were on the map today. Calves. Now, you guys that have watched me for a long time, you have seen at least one period of me dissecting the thoughts about the involvement of calves, not just in athleticism, but predominantly in squatting and in deadlifting. And then in recent times, I told you a story how, you know, um, that was probably one of the lives I said, I spoke to, um, oh man, I always forget his name, the strong man winner from, from this year, world's strongest man, oh my god, why is my brain letting me loose again, anyway, you guys will probably know who I'm talking about, uh, I jumped on one of his lives, and I asked him what is the best squat accessory, and he mentioned deadlifting, and uh, he kind of spent a couple of minutes explaining himself to me why he thinks deadlifting is very important for squatting, and he kind of you know, said that uh, deadlifts are squats plus calf raises. He basically said the role of calves is huge. Um, and deadlifting trains the calves a lot, whether you believe it or not. Anyway, he planted that seed in my brain again. And then straight away, I reverted back to the old school days of me thinking about calves. And then today I did what I did. I, I trained some calves today. And uh, I'm happy to say that with that little pad around the bar, for some reason, it felt really nice today. And I reckon I could get away with not getting a, a seated calf raise. I reckon this little setup that I've got today worked really well. Anyway, guys, appreciate you like always. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.